To create the hand, first we make an outline for it using the Add Curve tool. Switching to the top view, click on a few points on the plane until we have a few points to make up a hand. Click on the Close Curve tool to close the curve, and now edit the points in such a way so that you make a hand. While this actual piece won't be part of our hand, we're going to use it as a guide to assist us to make the control mesh, which we'll use subdivision on in order to create our hand. Once you see that you have a good shape, left click on the object subtraction tool to convert it into a polygon. Now you see we have our guide. So we make a cube, which we're going to position on one of the tips of the hand. Now we switch to the top view, and we rotate it accordingly. Now we select the front face, and we sweep it out. We will continue to sweep this face out along the curvature of the hand, using the guide to help us. Don't worry if it doesn't match up exactly, we just want to get the rough shape. We'll use the point edit tools later on in order to give us a more exact shape. For now, just sweep it and curve it continuously around until it matches up like this. You'll find that the sweep tool has a history function. As you continuously sweep it out, it will remember if you've changed its shape or if you've rotated it in any way, and it will extrapolate the next sweep accordingly. If you make a mistake, just click undo like this. Don't worry about sweeping too many times. As a matter of fact, that's what you want to avoid. All you want here is a rough shape. Now that we have all the proper segments swept out, we're going to switch to the perspective view. We're also going to add a view. You'll find this very useful in many situations. In this case, we're going to use the top view to help us move the points around. The perspective view will help us select the edges, and on the top view, we'll move them around to match our guide. Select edges from the point edit menu to make sure you only select the edges and click on the ones that you see are out of line. Click on them in the perspective view and then move your mouse into the new view that we've created to move them around. As you move the edges around, you'll find that you'll have to rotate the perspective view around the object in order to reach the edges that are on the other side of the object. Just keep rotating around and moving all the edges, making sure that they line up with the guide. Don't worry about it being too exact, you just need the fairly rough shape. Subdivision will take care of the rest, as you'll see in a few steps. Subdivision is a very powerful tool and can be used to model very complex curved surfaces. If you ever need to model a fairly complex object, I recommend you not only use a guide in the XY plane as you see here, but also a guide along the vertical Z axis, along the ZX and the ZY. That way, you'll have all axes covered, and you can accurately model the object. There's virtually no limit to what you can do with subdivision. As you can see, our basic shape is done. Now we use the Move Axis to Center of Object tool, and we press the Delete key to hide them. Now we delete the curve because we no longer need it. Now we scroll in using the scroll button on the mouse, and we rotate to a better view to assist us in the subdivision process. Clicking on the Add Subdivision layer smooths out the entire object as you can see here. Right click on it to bring up the subdivision options. You can not only add more subdivision layers, making it smoother, you can also subtract and get back to your original mesh. We're going to add two layers, leave it like this, and extrude it a little in the z-axis. Now when we're done, we click on Extract Final Surface, and we click on Yes, and now we have a fully fledged object. As you can see, this is a much nicer shape than the control mesh, and it was arrived at very easily using subdivision. Now go ahead and save this object, and you'll use it in the next step.